welcome to Daddy's Money Used Car Lot. There's great deals. Great, it, yeah. That one's, you know, that one's not, that truck's not for sale though because that's mint condition. It's Indiana mint. It's Flint mint, if you would. Flint mint, Michigan? Flint, Michigan? <laughs> Flint, <laughs> Flint, Michigan. <laughs> hey, John, you remember this car? No. Probably. It's been a minute. I forget this car exists. It's broken. Because it's broken. So before we get into the video, I guess I'll talk about why I'm even bringing this thing up. Fusible link burned. And, you know, I guess it did what its job was to do, and that was keep the whole car from burning. But I've also neglected to fix it for a month because I've been working on the jet, which is over there. Can you see it through the tree? Not quite. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's whatever. It's fine. We're not known for good videography. I try. The past week I've been turning on the jet and getting it ready for abuse because We've run out of excuses. There's abuse in this video. I, I don't know exactly where it's gonna be because I haven't edited it yet, but it's there somewhere. The reason I even bring this car up at all is because it's going to No Name Nationals too and we gotta fix it, but that'll take like five minutes. You know what's not gonna take five minutes? The rest of this video. <laughs> I guess we go back pretty much a week then because I started working on this, I think like on like last Wednesday, so. All right. Yeah, cool. It is a beautiful Tennessee summer afternoon. I'm gonna go pick up John and we're gonna do a little bit of stuff with the jet probably try to get some action in this video because i feel like eventually people are just gonna start getting angry about me trying to take care of our expensive stuff and not break it before a humongous event that we're slated to go to you know that's the thing like i, it, I don't want to break it here but it can break at the no-name nationals all at once I don't, I don't really give a fuck i've driven stick shifts since i started driving I, the first car i owned was a stick however i have never owned anything that had like real power like my first car was an 89 f-150 with a 300 that didn't spin the tires at all the only other car i drove frequently that was a stick was john's mazda rx8 which you pretty much have to dump the clutch on it three grand to get to move that's just you know rotaries ask him about those he'll tell you about them all day i have not done a burnout in a performance car like this ever so i'm gonna have to figure out how i figure i'm just gonna youtube it and hope nothing breaks i'm gonna go pick up john and then we're heading to my grandparents' house because my grandmother has something to give us to put on the jet. And they may or may not be in the video. It just depends on how they feel. John. What? People want us to go break our stuff. Are they paying for it? I mean, technically, yeah. No, dude, this thing was built with the intention of going out and breaking it. I guess we have to deliver it at some point. What are you doing? Uh, I'm getting us a... Uh, uh, you know, speedometer since you still have not ordered the speedo cable. Hey, you know, that costs money. That's what, a G-Tech drag timer Something. thing? Something. I don't it even worked. know what it, it is. It has built-in speedo function, so. Yeah, but so do our phones. Yeah, but that you can just leave there. I mean, I could leave my phone there, too. You just lose it. I'd lose it anyway. You lose everything. Let me take a moment to remind everybody, if you have a channel that has a sticker, please send us your sticker. I'm going to put the email down below. We want to fill this uh, windshield up with uh, community stickers because the community helped build this car, and that's what it's all about. So let us know, send it to us, we'll put it on there. Also, if you're a, a company that makes parts or anything and you want your sticker on the car, yeah, send us money. Nitrous Express didn't pay us or anything. We literally bought all this ourselves, but uh, you know, that'd be nice. I don't know if they're going to want to be in the video, but maybe. We'll see. Okay. Were you just filming me getting out Graceful. of Graceful. Yeah. Graceful. Like, like a swan, man. Swan getting hit by a bus. I probably need those keys, don't I? Yeah. 
What's your name, man? Brian Bourne, man. Austin. Nice to meet you. That's John. Nice hey. to meet y'all, man. You heard it coming, you could tell it was a Oh, I can hear it hitting good. <laughs> well, you got a lot of nitrous on it, don't you? This is a Magnum. This yeah. came out of a truck. I put two of those in a 42-foot Gibson houseboat. Yeah. They were crate motors. Did it do a wheelie? I water skied behind and got paid $100. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> in a houseboat? Yeah. Do you think we and could take the UPS truck and a drag race? Yeah. Well, yeah, this is sharp, man. Thanks, man. Put enough gas to it not to run it too lean. Uh, it's not on the nitrous yet. What kind of gear you Oh, it's got a 410. That means that it does like 80. But it sounds really mean doing it. Four speed. Yeah. That came out of a satellite. It's not even for this car. Yeah. Well, That's cool. To, had, yeah. Everything had to be made to fit. It's made out of like four different cars. Yeah. So. Yeah, that sharp little, little ride. I, boy, this thing got to fly, man. It looks like you had an inline shifter. No, it's H pattern. No, that'd be way better because the gates in this thing are like half an inch apart I at the top of the shift. Half an inch? No, dude, they're, they're like an eighth of an inch apart. The Hurst is a really good one. It's just we gotta get used to it because it's short term. Everything's really close together. So yeah. you can you can really easily start it in third or completely miss second. That's the biggest thing you explode clutches. Oh, it's got a pretty strong clutch. It's got a Borg and Beck three finger ram clutch. It's, yeah. it's rated for 600 horse. Okay, so and you're good. I had a 283, man. It'd shoot the freaking clutches out the bottom. I used to break the ears off those monthly aluminum case four speed. Yeah. It'd pop wheelies about this high, though. This one's got a, a Lakewood scatter shield. We were afraid of uh, clutches exploding. Too. Yeah, that's so a good thing. Safety was like the third consideration when building this thing. Kind of. But, I mean, it was third, so it was up there on the list, so it got done. My buddy up here, we've got all kinds of Mopar motors. I got a 440 HP. I have a 71 Highway Patrol car. I run it in a demolition derby down at the fairgrounds in the 80s. One out of 10 heats, man. It's a ball. I got 426 wedge over there out of a houseboat. That's it's got the cool. four-speed bell housing on it. That's even better. Yeah. <laughs> they used a four-speed bell housing this, in both? This is an interceptor. 426 wedge. It is a bad son of a bitch. I built it back in the 80s and had it in a, a steel hall 50 foot houseboat. We had it down at Riverfront Park. It sounded better than any jet boat you've ever heard. <laughs> it racks off. It's got a solid lift cam in it and everything. Yeah, yeah. I have some buddies that stroke those. They uh, put a crank kit in those 360s. You can get them up to a 408. Up. Yeah. yeah. And boy, yeah. they'll scream. And nice Brian Bourne's my name. Nice to meet you. If you ever need any tools worked on, I, I uh, work at Allied Tool Repair right there on 2nd oh. Lafayette. Oh, sweet. So I work on all your pneumatic uh, guns, all that stuff. We'll, well see you, man. Y'all get on it. <laughs> Have a good one, man. <laughs> well, guys, my grandparents didn't want to be on camera. I expected that. I wish they would have been. They're really, really great people. They've had Mopars themselves. My grandfather's first car was a 68 Barracuda, and my grandmother's first car was a 62 Dart. John's inside getting some Mapco race gas, which is pretty much just 93 mixed with this. So this is what they had for me, and it's definitely going on the car. <laughs> just because they got it for me. I just got to figure out where I'm going to put it. Hi, John. Hi. How much gas did you get? Um, however much 30 bucks is gonna put in it. It'll probably only get us like, I don't know, 20 miles? Eight gallon cell, really. Yeah, it's a 10 gallon cell, but you, know, you can really only put eight in it. Okay. Here's the race gas changer added thing, and you're gonna drive it back. This is gonna be fun. Please don't kill us. I'll try. You've driven a stick shift before. First stick I actually learned on was a 10 speed Eaton Fuller. Really? Yeah. I remember the Mazda was fun to drive. This is because rotary. Very different. Yeah. Yeah, the Eaton, you could start it in fourth. The clutch is pretty much going to grab, you know, at the top of the pedal. It releases pretty much immediately. There's free play. It's a race clutch. Just don't smoke it. It right. was expensive. You know. I know. I don't mean to talk to you like you don't know. I'm just saying that it's expensive. And we are on full. Dude, full is nothing.
do you think about what we've created? As long as I don't accidentally try to put it in reverse or uh, third, we're pretty good. This we're... seems to be the common thing. Everybody starts it in third. Dude, they're so close together. I mean... It is a hearst. Yeah, I think... That's reverse. That's reverse. And then first is that's right first. there. And then, and then third is right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's there, real easy to put it in the third. It's a great shifter. You just got to get used to it. It feels good. It's just really close to my it's, knee it, with this T-handle, which ain't helping me, but you know. You know, Sabrina's dad suggested putting a bend in that shifter. That's a good idea. We probably should. I suggested it before we put it in, and everybody stopped me from bending it. Did we? Yes. That was a little bit of abuse, but I think we need to go harder. Burnouts. We need to find somewhere to do them. Another day, it's too dark. It looks beautiful out today, but I don't think it's supposed to last. So hopefully before the rain comes in the next couple hours, we'll be able to get some tuning and abuse in or else we're gonna have to wait until another pretty day because this car can't be driven in the rain yet. Well, I guess I can't feel too bad about making noise because they're testing the uh, tornado sirens on the golf course. <laughs> Those are air raid sirens left over from World War II. Out of all the places you could put those things, why would you put them on a golf course and test them on Saturday when everybody's playing golf? Also, sorry if the audio and video is a little bit different. I forgot my GoPro at the house. And I'm not at the house because I am tuning on the jet. There are a few things that I needed to touch up on that I hadn't gotten to yet. The biggest one being setting the dwell. If you don't know what setting dwell is or any of that, I don't, I mean, I don't blame you. It's, it's not something that's really done anymore on cars. It only pertains to cars with point style ignition, which if you remember, this is a, <laughs> this is a 360 magnum out of a 95 ram and i put a dual point distributor on it that was simply because i'm an orangutan and i only understand points so ignition points if you don't know the quick and dirty it's a switch it just opens and closes when it's closed it's building up a charge in the coil when it opens it releases that and sends it to the plugs you have to set the gap between the two contacts and you can do that with feeler gauges or if you want to be precise and professional about it you use this old obsolete tool called a dwell meter. Dwell is just a measurement of how long those points are closed. And that is a much more precise way to do it. Those tools are not common anymore. I don't think you can really pick those up. This one's from the 70s. I bought that a few years ago for my car. I have a 65 Plymouth with a 318 poly head that's on points with the same exact distributor. Although this one is a lot easier to set because the 318 in that car is about three miles wide. And I can actually just reach over on this one instead of throwing myself under the hood. So Mallory recommends that you set your dwell at 26 degrees on each set of points and you have to set points on a dual point distributor individually by taking like a piece of cardstock and blocking off one and then setting the one that you didn't block off and then switch it around and set the other one to the same measurement so that they're you know they're all synced i have already set this i you know i don't have anybody else here today to hold the camera so I'm just, you know, on my own, in the wind. Theoretically, 26 degrees of dwell on your set of points is gonna give roughly between 30 and 35 degrees of dwell. And we'll see, because I just finished. So let me get the piece of cardstock out of that and I'll fire it back up and we'll see what it's doing. So we have between 33 and 34 degrees of dwell and the idle is really high. Something to be said about setting dwell is if you make a change to your dwell angle, it has a small but noticeable effect on your ignition timing. So if you're going to set your dwell, have your timing light ready, which I do in the trunk. So now I'm gonna retime this and now I gotta retune everything because anytime you make an adjustment to ignition, you have to make an adjustment to the carburetor. So uh, let me get on that. So I got her set to about 10 degrees before top dead center. Just advanced on her a little bit. And uh, while I was setting everything, I did not turn on the fans. So she got a little toasty. Didn't overheat, but was getting hot. So now I'm letting her cool off and then I'm gonna take her out on the road. I'm actually gonna go to like a hobby store today and I'm gonna try to get some straps to put here so we can yank the windows up because we're having to put a tarp over the car when it rains 
and we don't want to do that. While I'm waiting on her to cool off, remember what I said about sending us stickers? We got more from Australia. But that one's from Canada. We got those a while ago. Thank you guys. Still on a quest to fill up this back glass before no name. I'll put the email down below, again, because I don't remember if I did before. While I've been waiting, I went ahead and set the accelerator pumps. The one on the primary side was loose. The one on the secondary right there was tight. So let's see what that does. Well, I've driven her about, I don't know, 10 miles or so. And the adjustments I made have made a world of difference. She runs very smooth, very happy, doesn't stumble. But now I'm gonna give her a wash cause she's filthy and I've managed to force the windows up. And I don't know what I'm gonna do about this hole, but you know, we'll just cross that bridge when we come to it. Even if your car looks like it came out of or belongs in a junkyard, you should go out and show us some love. It handles all of the abuse you give it. So it might as well look good doing it. Oh no, I'm getting water under the hood. Oh, I really don't care. You gotta make sure that the badge isn't shiny. We're gonna see how good John's wiring holds up to this. Also, I wanna point out, see that little black thing on the uh, air filter? That's a uh, pre-filter stock. It's made out of the same stuff that like raincoats and windbreakers are made out of. So theoretically, it should not let water in. We're gonna figure out how good that stands up because that thing is soaked. As you can see, the car has moved. I did not clean the water off and it had no problem. I also forgot to bring a squeegee with me to clean off the windshield. So I need to do that before the sun hits that and turns my vision into a kaleidoscope. And the rain's coming, like I said earlier. So I've got to get home. I don't know how much more I'll be able to do on it today, but if it doesn't turn out to be horrible, then we'll continue. I gotta say, she does look good all sparkled up. And a lot of guys are suggesting that we paint this car. And I'll tell you right now, that's probably not gonna happen because then we would have to care about the paint. Whereas when this happens and the primer flakes off, we could just spray paint it with whatever and we won't care. Well, I beat the rain and now I guess I gotta figure out how I'm seal it up because it is about to storm yay happy labor day is labor day even really a holiday yes it's a federal holiday it's may day international workers day it's the same everywhere man nobody gives gifts on labor day the gift is not working at your terrible job but it's called labor day so that would mean that you I don't understand this holiday. I spent a lot of time day before yesterday tuning this thing. Then it rained for like a whole day. While we have some weather that is not crap, even though if you look over there, it's about to be crap. Incoming. We might as well try to go ahead and do some burnouts and break all of our stuff. Don't say It's that. okay, we're gonna cheat, John. We're gonna cheat. You made sure this is organic, boneless water, right? As far as I know, there's no bones. Because we're gonna be sending rubber into the air. We wanna make sure we send clean water to offset so that we don't actually damage the environment. Sure. I, for one, have never done a burnout in a powerful car on purpose. From what I can figure out that you do is you pretty much just rev it up and then just let the clutch out expediently and then get on the brake. If so, you wanna do a brake stand, yeah. So like like the most like damaging possible things that we could do to it. Yeah. It's essentially the equivalent of a neutral drop, if you think about it. Yeah, except this is probably going to hurt drive shaft and U-joints and diff before it hurts the actual guts of the transmission. Well, let's get our uh, wood chalk thing out that's keeping it from rolling it into your truck and throw some water down and see if we can actually get the same spin tires. I know the car will, but... Oh, will, it will. The question will is whether we... we can control it. I mean, we got plenty of room so uh, the parking lot looks smaller in video than it is that's but it's actually like a good half a football field over there it's not that big it's it's big enough it's big enough to where the brakes will stop the car well let's get this thing unchocked let me put it in gear first it's probably a good idea there's that what does this even come from um i found it in the road when i pulled into my neighborhood one night so i figured it'd be useful 
It seems to be like the, like the running thing, the traffic cone. I found two thirds of, wood, of a Subaru headlight. Uh, a shop one back time. Where I ran over. We're using water because one, we don't want to break anything, or we want to min minimize the risk of breaking stuff, but also because these tires are super soft and super sticky, and above all, extremely expensive. Yeah. Look at that. Put some on the tread for good measure. That looks like you know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Every time that I've spun tires in a vehicle, it was on ice or it was just way too wet or you're making a right turn in a mercury because they just like to break loose there for some reason. Let's see what happens. All right, John, fingers crossed we don't break anything. Who's getting fing- What? Huh? Do you like violence? <laughs> Who doesn't? Well, so long, expensive car. You rolled out of the water. Did? Yeah. Like five feet. Yeah, that worked. I bet. <laughs> See how warm these are. Uh, they got sticky. Well, then they did their job. They did their job. Let's see how far those go. She marked her territory, didn't she? Yeah, let's just step this one off. 10, 20, 30. How far she lay rubber, John? I'm gonna say somewhere around 50 foot. She went. She went. Let's make sure we didn't break anything. I feel like we would have noticed that. I see nothing obviously broken. We have to save these for no name. We may be daddy's money garage, but we, we don't have daddy's money, so we gotta keep on using these tires. Yeah, the whole title is a joke. It's irony. I mean, look at this thing. Do you think this thing's about daddy's money? No. Until you pop the hood. It's amazing how many different cars people have gotten this wrong as. Somebody said it was a Nova, which I get it, like a 60s Nova. Maybe. But not a 70s, you know, whatever. There was that dude in our neighborhood that thought it was a Mustang. Yeah, I don't until understand. we pointed out that it's got too many doors. Like four doors? Yeah. He's got the spirit, but he doesn't have the knowledge. There is a bit of an announcement. Is there? Next weekend, Mopar Al, Slaghammer. Oh, and we're going to Cars and Coffee. And they have a circle track. Oh, it's not a circle. Not? It's the GP track. So there's you run on the infield, oh God, too. Oh, we have to turn? Yeah, you have to turn. Dude, we're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Mopar Al is going to the track this coming Saturday. And I've been talking to him, and I think we're going to join him. So we'll be able to actually take this thing on its first time at the drag strip. Sweet. Yeah, that's thunder. We don't have wipers on this thing yet. I think that's the signal to get out. Why are you still muffs. wearing the earmuffs? Because I forgot I was wearing them. How do you forget you're wearing them? It gets quiet, and then it's peaceful because we can't hear you. Me specifically? Yeah, uh, you know. Call outs. Call outs. This is for the No Name Nationals grudge races or call out races. I don't know. Grudge, call out, is that interchangeable? I don't think there are any real real grudges. Yeah. Are yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, there's a couple. I think there's a few. Let me preface this with we are completely inexperienced drag racers with this car. It's essentially the equivalent of giving an M60 to a toddler. I don't know if there's many bragging rights in beating us, honestly, though. But it's going to be fun. First up. Bad Tree Productions and the Nacho Cuda. I think John's actually taking that race against Blake, aren't you? I think we talked about that a while back. The cars are really closely matched, so it would be interesting, but it's yeah. all going to come down to driver skill, which I have none. Next one, Junk Car Willie and his Buick Riviera. Ooh. Yeah, you'll love his car. Yeah, I'm taking that race. And we have a third person, so do we do three call-outs? I mean, he ain't here, so it wouldn't be fair to speak but, for him. But, I mean, we can speak for Garrett. He's always, he's dead. He's in the ether. Just... We should call him and cut it. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna call him. We'll just we'll just sign him up to race Travis's Mopar garage. Oh, you're signing Garrett up to go against the truck? Yeah, yeah, I am. The That's gonna be the best it. sounding race there. That truck's cool. Yeah, it is. Those are our call outs. Any other ones, just find us at No Name and talk to us. We'll see what happens. With that bit of first abuse in, I think we probably need to get home before the rain hits. Yeah, we need to get the wipers out of my garage and like Put them on, Put them on and, yeah, and, and like wire it because it's. There's... Next weekend, 
drag strip throughout the week this thing's getting an exhaust i'm gonna be taking footage like i usually do and i guess we'll have another video in another week all right all right catch y'all in the next one like and subscribe do that too Don't subscribe forget. hit the hit yeah, the button please, please clap literally as soon as we finished it started raining also there's way too many cars here it's like a mexican pawn shop